Someone special is heading to Boulder this weekend. And while it's not Santa Claus, it is someone who's pretty important to the Colorado Buffaloes. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We are also brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in and making me your first listen. Obviously, Santa Claus would be cool. It's a little early, though. I don't know where you guys stand. I'm more of a Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving night, Christmas decorations are going up. So who could be so special that is visiting Colorado? Well, it's none other than Julian Lewis, um, the five-star quarterback who has been committed to USC for about a year now. And it doesn't seem like... It seemed all, all signs seem to point that he's to him not ending up with USC, right? I think there's a lot of things working against USC at the moment. Lincoln Riley is sort of, I don't think he should be on the hot seat. I think it's too early, but there's a lot of frustrations there. Um, and every time Lincoln Riley struggles, there's immediately rumors that he's going to be linked to any NFL job. Plus they have a quarterback in UNLV transfer, Jalen Maiava. And then I don't know if Miller Moss can return, but he could probably be back in the mix. Right. So you, and USC is having a bad season, right? They're, they just fell below, 500 um it's kind of looking ugly over there uh, after they started the season off with the one of the biggest wins of the season uh, one of the biggest wins of the year they beat lsu um 27 to 13 or excuse me 27 to 20 um number 13 ranked lsu in vegas and then all of a sudden they beat utah state and it's like okay cool they're two and zero. they're gonna be really good then they lose to michigan and it's like okay michigan's a good team then they beat wisconsin then they lose to minnesota penn state and maryland so things have fallen apart quickly for usc and while reports indicate that Indiana is also a player for um, Julian Lewis, because obviously they're having a great year, they're undefeated. They kind of look like a playoff team, right? I think the Colorado Buffaloes have a chance to make a statement this weekend to Julian Lewis, right? We've talked about making statements on the field um, throughout the season where it's like handling business or winning a tough road. Or whatever it is, Cincinnati wishes come true. And B, they have a chance to sort of impress and wow their quarterback of the future, possibly. Um, he's going on an unofficial visit. I believe this is his third visit in the past year or so. He went on two unofficials and then an official in June. Uh, Colorado has to put on a show for him, right? You want him to see the offense that he should be running next year. You want him to see, hey, look at Shador Sanders. We want you to be doing that next year. Look at who he's throwing to. Guys like I mean, Omarion Miller's not out there, but we're not going to have these these weapons. But you will have weapons. You'll have guys like Michael Welch um, running the ball behind you. You're going to have an improved offensive line that's been around. Like, the, you have to go all out on this pitch, right? You have to show him that, hey, you're, the ball's going to be in your hands. You have a chance to play right away. And I think this is the weirdest part about recruiting, but single-game visits, like watching a team win on a visit, I think has way more in impact or sort of influence than it should. Right. I know a lot of recruits go to these big games where it's like Miami beat Florida and it's like, ah, Miami's hot right now. You gotta be, you gotta go to the U. Right. And it's like, well, Florida sucks. Right. Florida's not that good. Or at that time they weren't, I mean, I still don't think they're going to be that good, but you know, it's like, I think that recruits put a lot of emphasis onto, well, when I went to this school, when on my visit, they won. So it was a big deal. Like, I want to be a part of that. And so Colorado is going to have a sold out crowd late night game, and they're going to have a chance to one, make a bowl game and continue to make their charge into big 12 contention. I think realistically Julian Lewis is the most important recruit in the country for Colorado right now. Um, obviously I would like to see them get some more offensive linemen, some more defense alignment corners, whatever it may be. Obviously you're going to lose Travis Hunter. But Julian Lewis, the quarterback of the future for who, whichever program he goes to, you can't not have a quarterback of the future. I think right now what worries me about Colorado is that I don't see a clear plan like at quarterback. It feels like it's Julian Lewis or bust in the recruiting ring. So obviously 
you don't want to hit bust on your pause. You don't want to miss on the one guy that you really want. And secondly, it means that you're going to have to take a flyer on a transfer. Now, there's going to be good transfer portal quarterbacks. Like, There's going to be guys that come from the group of five ranks that are really good that are trying to move on up. Um, I know T. Cal from Buckton Prime likes the two-lane quarterback. I don't know if he's going to transfer, but there's guys like, like that who may transfer. There's guys like, say, Chiron Drones from Virginia Tech who may want to finish his career out, career out somewhere else if he thinks that he could boost his draft status one after one more season. And then there's guys like the Ohio State quarterback situation where it's like, okay, right now they have Will Howard, right? Next year, Devin Brown, is he going to want to compete against all those five stars? Or maybe it's his job to win next year. Does Julian Sion, Sion the five-star quarterback that I think was at one point ranked the number one quarterback in the country, does he want to stick around in, at Ohio State? Air Nolan, same thing. Uh, DeMond Williams up in, up in Washington, right? Like, does he want to stick around over there? Like, Obviously, these aren't. This isn't me saying that those guys are going to transfer. Some of those guys may transfer. None of those guys may transfer. All of them may transfer. Who knows? But for Colorado, at least if you have Julian Lewis, you know what you have coming in, right? If you don't land a quarterback like Julian Lewis in this recruiting class, then you're going to be stuck having to sort of go transfer portal fishing. And I'm just going to say this right now: transfer portal fishing at the quarterback position is tough, right? It's not as easy as you think. Um, I think realistically, he, there's a lot of quarterbacks who I think look better on paper where it's like, oh, wow, this guy's going to be so good once he gets here. Um, and it's just not it's just not what they it's not what people want. Right. Like, I'll, I'll pull up the list of the top transfers quarterbacks right now. Um, we'll just sort of talk about them like Julian saying Alabama, and Ohio State. Obviously, he didn't stay at Alabama. He went he left Alabama after Nick Saban um, retired. We haven't seen him. Um, Aiden Childs leaves Oregon State to go to Michigan State. He's He's got promise. He's got potential. Hasn't looked as good as we thought. Dante Moore, UCLA to Oregon, five-star um, recruit. He's a backup right now to Dylan Gabriel. Hasn't done much. Cam Ward, really good, right? Brock Vandergriff, Georgia con to Kentucky. I would say Brock's done solid, but Kentucky's not anything special. He's not anything special. Malik Murphy, Texas to Duke. I mean, a lot of promise, huge arm. I feel like Duke's won some games where he hasn't played well, but they've still pulled it out. I think they have a solid team, which helps him. Austin Mack, Washington, Alabama, hasn't done anything. Jaden Rashada, um, ASU to Georgia, hasn't done anything. Daquan Finn, Toledo to Boise State, really good at Toledo, um, and he lost the starting job to Sawyer Robinson. So it's like you don't really know. You don't. You never know how good these quarterbacks are going to be. DJ Uyunglele, right, has a back a bounce back season at Oregon State. Goes to Florida State. Now Florida State is. I think they're off to one of their worst starts in program history. Um, it's definitely a tough look. Malachi Nelson, right, former five star from USC, goes to Boise State. Five five star. Like I said, like I said, doesn't win the starting job at Boise State. Tyler Van Dyke gets injured. Unfortunate, right? Max Brosmer from New Hampshire, Minnesota. Grace McCall. He just retired. Like you never know what you're going to get in the transfer pool. So, and it's you you never know what you're going to get in a recruit, but when it's a recruit who's as as highly touted as Julian Lewis, a lot of people say he's can't miss. I feel more confident in Julian Lewis. Now, it feels a, like a lot to say you have more confidence in a freshman quarterback who's never played a snap, but that's how I would want to go around it. Maybe nab a, a mid-tier transfer quarterback just in case, but I would like to have Julian Lewis um, for the future Colorado. Otherwise, the quarterback situation is quickly going to get ugly. When we come back, I'm going to be talking about why this Cincinnati game feels like a trap game, even though it's not really a trap game. And I'll explain because I know that's a little bit confusing. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out your latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where... You place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel. To get in on the fun. You got even basketball. Basketball season just started. I'm really liking anything where it's Luka and over the points. I feel like he's going to put up a lot of points. Maybe Clay Thompson hits some threes tonight. We never know. So go check out the odds over at FanDuel. 
Welcome back to Locked on Bus. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, making me your first listen of the day. We are free and available wherever, wherever you get your podcasts. So thank you guys for tuning in and, again, just supporting the show every single day. Let's talk about why this feels like a trap game. Now, let me define what a trap game is, and let me explain why this is trap-ish but not trap-full, if you know what I mean. A trap game is, for example, say Texas had beat Georgia, right? And or let's see, who does Georgia play this weekend? That'll be an easier one since Georgia did beat Texas, right? So Georgia beats Texas on the road. They take down the number one team in the country, um, convincingly, might I add, and they play against Florida, which granted Florida's a rival, but let's pretend they weren't rivals. And Florida's four and three. Billy Napier is in a hot seat, and it's like, okay, Georgia's not like Georgia was up for the Texas game. It's the number one team in the country. For Georgia or for Florida, it's like, eh, eh. Like, I, don't, I don't care necessarily, but eh. And then they lose, or they come close to losing. That's a trap game. Obviously, Cincinnati and Colorado have the same record, so this is why it's not fully a trap game. But Colorado's been picking up a lot of momentum, right? They've won four straight. You're, excuse me. They've won three out of their last four. Totally mis, uh, misread that. Um, they've won three out of their last four, um, four out of their last five, if you will with the loan the loan loss coming to Kansas State, which is a game I think they should have won. And then they blow out Arizona this past week. And now it's like, okay, everyone's like, I just talked about it a couple days ago. People are changing their tune on Colorado because they think Colorado could be a really good team. People think they could be a playoff team. I myself think that they have a chance to push for a playoff spot, assuming they push for a Big 12 title. But the biggest word in the dictionary, you have to win out. You have to handle business. So does Colorado get complacent, right? I think Coach Prime does a really good job of trying to make sure that his guys are like don't feel like they've accomplished anything because at the end of the day, they haven't accomplished, like they haven't made a bowl game yet, which I mean one win away and they will, but they haven't accomplished what they set out to, which is making the playoff, winning, winning the Big 12, winning a title, whatever their other goals are. So I don't think that this would happen. Like I don't think Coach Prime would let this happen, at least with what he's preaching. But – the players, are the players going to be ready? Are they going to be up for this game? This is why it kind of feels like a trap game, right? Colorado's open the open the game, or open the line, excuse me, favored by four. It's now gone up to six and a half. I think it's gone up a full point every single day or a point and a half every single day this week. And so, and they have a 68% chance of winning. I know players don't gamble and they don't look at like the ESPN matchup predictor, but they hear what people say. They hear the playoff momentum. They hear the... Oh, Colorado's good now. Like they hear that. They do. Because they also hear the negative things. So I think if Colorado comes out flat, which there's also this interesting notion that Colorado doesn't play well in late games. And I thought that was interesting for sure because they just have like when it gets a little dark out, Colorado struggles, right? That what's like they played against, for instance, Colorado State. What time was that game at? That game was at 5:30 mountain time. They, they played solid, right? Then they they welcomed Baylor to town. They kind of dominated that Baylor game, 6 o'clock mountain time. They dominated in the sense of, like, they were better, but they didn't play better, right? They were way better looking, but the scoreboard didn't indicate that. So they needed overtime to win that game. Then Kansas State, late game, ugly game. Nebraska, kind of a late game, kind of an ugly game. So can Colorado, who's going to be sitting around all day on Saturday, get up for this game, know that, hey, just because we've won a couple games doesn't mean we're hot, whatever. Like, we have to take every opponent seriously. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to not be up for them, but I do know that's something that I will be watching out for. So, you guys let me know. Is this kind of a trap game, or am I just looking too much into it? I broke down my three keys yesterday, which you guys missed. It was dominating the passing game, force Brendan Soresby to, Brendan Soresby to make some mistakes, um, whether you're getting to him or not, um, he, he's only been sacked 10 times, so it's hard to get to him, but you have to force him to be uncomfortable and make mistakes, and then you got to run the ball usefully, right? Just run the ball. Make some plays happen. So let me know if you guys think this is a trap game. When I come back, I will be talking about the controversial, the divisive, the Heisman race between Ashton Genty and Travis Hunter. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by PrizePix. PrizePix is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions, billions of dollars in award awarded winnings. PrizePix has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less 
on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on prize picks. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is the best way to get in on the action over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. So sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to you don't even need to win to receive the five the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. If you think Justin Jefferson will get more than 83 and a half yards next week, you could bet on that. Cook up hot, cook up hot takes with your friends and real money and win real money this football season when you and your crew run your game on prize picks. I myself, I hop on a prize picks every weekend during the college football slate. I've won on three of my past lineups. A pick that I like this week is actually for someone to throw a pick. Utah quarterback Isaac Wilson has thrown an interception every game this season that he's played, and the only game that he didn't, he only threw nine passes. He's injury or he's an injury prone. He's interception prone, and there's a new offense. I think that's a safe one to go with. So download the app today and use code locked on college for fifty dollars to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup and i promise you you'll have a lot of fun prize picks is fun prize picks run your game welcome back to locked on buffs i appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day making me your first listen of the day we are free and available wherever you get your podcast so thank you guys for tuning in like i say all the time my everyday is you know who you are comment below also make sure to comment a mailbag question just in case you guys want me to go over something um, or a comment or whatever. We could we could dive into that as well. Let's talk about the Heisman race right now. Um, I think it's getting a little bit weird with it's like Ashton Genty versus Travis Hunter and it's getting personal, right? I think a lot of people are like they want like they they want it to be a lot of people, Colorado fans included, they want it to be Travis Hunter so bad. And I mean, I think he's the best player in college football. I've already said. The award should go to the best player in college football. The best player in college football also has to play well. So if Travis Hunter goes out there and doesn't perform like he has been the past couple games, I think it's going to be really hard for him to continue to have a case for the Heisman. If he reverts to the Travis that we know, which Coach Prime said he's been better in terms of health-wise, I think it's possible. Now, this is what it comes down to for me, and I think this is, I think, how the voting will go down. If Ashton Genty breaks Barry Sanders' record, 36 years or 35 years, whatever it is, hasn't been touched. I think he wins the award, right? But he has to break the record, and Boise State has to, at the very minimum, make the group of, or the Mountain West Championship, which I think they will. Um, but I would feel more safe if they made the playoff, right? They're not going to give the award to a group of five running back who didn't make the playoff. It's just how it goes. For Travis Hunter, Colorado has to contend for a Big 12 title. I think... That's just how it goes, and I think realistically, I think they can do that. Um, but he also has to put up numbers like he was. Like these past couple games, granted he's been dealing with injuries, not going to cut it. They're just not going to cut it. He has 51 catches, which is 19th in the country. Um, or uh, Excuse me. Yeah, 19th in the country in terms of uh, receiving yards. In terms of catches, he's he's a little bit better. Um, I would say right now he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's top 10 in catches defensively. He has a couple picks. Like he has to continue to add on to that. Now here's where it gets hard for me to like the voters are going to like, this is sort of for everyone to realize the voters are going to look at which one is harder, right? Breaking a record that's been standing forever, doing something that no one's really done. And how much do they produce, right? Which position is harder, wide receiver or running back? Because most of Travis's production that will help him with the Heisman comes from receiver. Re receiver is an inherently easier position to put up numbers, right? You want to run, you can run one route and get 60 yards, right? For a running back, it's not that simple, right? So there's also that. With running back, you're more reliant on the offensive line, obviously, defenses are able to key in on you like you're you're going up against more defenders in a way whereas as a receiver a couple corners maybe a safety so there's that two what is your impact on your team season right if neither of these these teams make it anywhere neither of these guys are going to win like if say colorado finishes seven and five 
I don't know if Travis Hunter is going to win it, right? Because a lot of times the voters vote for the quarterback on the best team. And so the few times that they vote for someone who's not a quarterback, they're still on the best team in college football. So there's that. So we need overall, like, you need your impact. You need what does your team do? And then statistically, I don't know what numbers Travis would have to put up, right? Because the hard part with Travis is I don't think he's going to break any receiving records. And so all, although, and this isn't me trying to shoot down his Heisman odds, I think he is the best player in college football. Although he's that great, our voters going to be like, well, we've seen people put up those numbers before. Granted, we haven't seen those people. We haven't seen people put up those numbers and put up numbers on defense, but that's just how people think. So I think this Heisman race really comes down to how well these teams do and sort of the, the sheer number of stats, right? If Ashton Genty continues at this historic pace, it's going to be hard for him to not win the award. It just is for an award to stand for this or for a record to stand this long, regardless of talent level, right? Because other people have been able to have other people have played at the same level and not come close. So it's a really tough debate. I think if Travis returns to the, the player or the stats that we saw the first couple of weeks, he's going to hop right back into the middle of things. Um, but if he doesn't, I think it's going to be a hard, hard uh, battle, uphill battle for him to win. You guys comment below. What do you think Travis needs to do to win the Heisman? I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Lockdown Buffs, making me your first listen. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. I will see you guys tomorrow.